left that day, but I couldn't stop thinking about that little girl. It took nearly two years, but eventually we adopted Jamian. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments that made us love Ewan McGregor. I'm totally cracked. I don't see any cracks. A few wrinkles, maybe. For this list, we'll be looking at the actor's best, most entertaining, and lovable moments that made him a star in our hearts and on the screen. What's your favorite thing about Ewan McGregor? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. No Time for Racism So many of the black actors and actors of color who have starred in Star Wars projects have been subjected to discriminatory behavior and racism. Just ask John Boyega and Kelly Marie Tran, who have spoken up about some of the hate they've received. In 2022, the incredibly talented Moses Ingram, who stars with McGregor in Disney Plus's Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries, received offensive messages in the wake of the show's premiere. And I heard some of them this morning and it just broke my heart. Moses is a brilliant actor, she's a brilliant woman, and she's absolutely amazing in this series. In response, McGregor posted a message to social media saying that those who go after Moses are, quote, no Star Wars fan in his mind. We're glad he decided to speak up. As the executive producer on the series, that we stand with Moses, we love Moses, and if you're sending her bullying messages, you're no Star Wars fan in my mind. Number 9. Indy King Speaking of Star Wars, much of McGregor's fame comes from his run as Obi-Wan Kenobi in the movie series prequels. But as any fan worth their salt knows, he's not just a franchise actor. I think you're lying. You're right. You see, they don't really know me. No, Alex. Throughout his career, he starred in multiple lower budget films, including Shallow Grave and Train Spotting, director Danny Boyle's first couple of films. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family. In fact, the latter of those helped to propel his career forward. He also gives a touching performance in Beginners as the son of a man who came out later in life. I thought he was your boyfriend. At least I'm the number one boyfriend. Oh, Pop. Oh. Plus, he's absolutely wonderful in I Love You, Philip Morris. Seriously, there are too many great performances to count. What the hell are you doing? I love you! I love you too. Number 8. Actors on Actors with Pedro Pascal if there's someone who can match McGregor's charm within the Star Wars franchise, it's definitely Pedro Pascal. That makes two of us. Pascal, who's the titular character in the Disney Plus series The Mandalorian, sat down with McGregor for Variety's Actors on Actors series, and the results were phenomenal. First of all, you can invent stuff, interiors or exteriors, that don't exist in the real world and put us into that. The two talk about everything from the pros and cons of working against a green screen to how hard it is to keep Star Wars secrets. We haven't shot, we haven't shot a third season so confidentially, are you like? No, maybe I shouldn't. Oh no, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and their respect for their craft and each other's work shines through the whole segment. My friends uh, picked me up uh, from the airport. I flew back to New York, and the first thing that they said to me was, "You have to see Train Spotting." Both of the actors' charm leaps off the screen, even when it's just on a virtual call. How did you keep the Baby Yoda's, um, it's not called Baby Yoda, Grogu, how did you keep it se how Grogu. Did I kept secret? Very good. Thank you. Number 7. No Beard, No Obi Imagine getting yelled at by Obi-Wan Kenobi for blowing through a stop sign. Honestly, there are worse people who could scream at you. And I pulled up beside him and I started raging at him. You idiot, you an idiot like this and my daughters were going like that dad but i saw in his eyes i saw the that's an obi-wan kenobi <laughs> that little anecdote is where this moment ends but during this segment on the graham norton show mcgregor talks about being recognized as obi-wan according to him a lot of children don't believe he's the star wars jedi because he usually isn't sporting the character's signature beard he takes it all in stride joking about chasing down little kids to prove to them that he is indeed who he says he is. I have chased after kids who don't believe that I am Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> I'm like, I am! I am Obi-Wan Kenobi! <laughs> McGregor has had a lot of great moments on Graham Norton. 
including proving he's still pretty good with the lightsaber. But this is our favorite. Number 6. Grown-Up Christopher Robin He's giant, huge, he's a massive beast, and he smells a little funny. Don't look him in the eye. <gasps> He has hair everywhere! McGregor has played iconic parts before. There's obviously Obi-Wan Kenobi, there's Halston, and so on. But this role is something else entirely. Who? Christopher Robin. No! No, 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 no. You, you can't be here. In 2018, he starred as a grown-up version of Christopher Robin, Winnie the Pooh's human best friend. The film follows the character as an adult who's lost his sense of childlike wonderment, and it's up to Pooh and his friends to help him get it back. Give me that! That's mine! Give it back! Well, it was mine first, you know. That is true. Oh, for heaven's sake! You can't just take a teddy bear from a grown man! In an interview about the film, McGregor said the part sort of helped him remember his personal experiences growing up. Everyone needs to connect with their inner child every now and then and the actor made it possible for all of us to do so. Thank you for waiting for me, Pooh. It's always a sunny day when Christopher Robin comes to play. Number 5. Puppy Time What time is it? It's puppy time. The BuzzFeed Celeb Puppy interview has given us a plethora of adorable clips to look back on fondly. They didn't give me, send me a script and say, you know, would you play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? They, <laughs> After all, there's just nothing better than adults cooing at little dogs. And McGregor's turn with the pups is no exception. You're saying that you'd play Obi-Wan again, is it true? And I said, yes, let's see if there's a good story between us. <laughs> the actor has had a few cute moments with dogs in the past, but this time he's absolutely bombarded with them. He immediately slips into a high-pitched voice, his words basically unintelligible while he cuddles with and coos at the adorable puppies. <laughs> it's incredibly pure and endearing, and there's nothing else we would rather watch. Hello, little puppy dog. Oh my God. <laughs> Number 4. Adopting His Daughter One thing you may not know about Ewan McGregor is that he's got a pretty successful travel show. It's given us a lot of great moments, from his incredible travels on motorbike across the world to getting adorably excited over sea otters. The beautiful. But there's one sincere instance that takes the cake. This little one here, who was found two weeks ago, will only talk with this girl here. In Long Way Up, the third installment of the series, McGregor talks about the decision to adopt his daughter Jamyun. He first met her at a shelter in Mongolia during the filming of Long Way Round in 2004. But he and his co-star Charlie Borman nearly left the country beforehand, which would have altered the course of events. One of those decisions in life where you think, I can look back on that and go, that would have, that would have changed everything, you know, if we'd done that. The way he talks about the experience is incredibly moving, so we'll let him tell it. And if we turned left, it would have her, you know, so that's pretty amazing. Number 3. The Prequels Let's face it, the Star Wars prequels can be somewhat polarizing. But we bet the vast majority of people can agree on the fact that Ewan McGregor does a phenomenal job. Taking up the role of Obi-Wan Kenobi after literal legend Alec Guinness played him in the original trilogy couldn't have been an easy feat. But McGregor does it with a grace and gravitas that's hard not to admire. I'm sorry for my behavior, Master. It's not my place to disagree with you about the boy. And I am grateful you think I'm ready to take the trials. You've been a good apprentice, Obi-Wan. He gives us some of the trilogy's best moments, including, of course, one particularly unforgettable line. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! He makes the character his own while still honoring the original. And it's amazing to witness. <laughs> Number 2. Anytime he sings. Now, when we say any, we mean any. For someone whose voice we simply adore, Ewan McGregor doesn't sing as often as we'd like him to. Hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words. So we're going to be focusing on his extraordinary work in Moulin Rouge. 
As Christian, a writer who forms a relationship with Nicole Kidman's Satine, McGregor rocks it, especially the singing. He takes Elton John's classic Your Song and makes it his own. And he's the epitome of sexy angst in El Tango de Roxanne. His lips caress your skin. It's more than I can stand. Plus, no one else could have made us fall in love with them quite as fast as he does in Elephant Love Medley. We should be lovers. We can't do that. Seriously, whenever he hits those high notes, it's an immediate swoon. We could be heroes, forever and ever. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Christian and Satine reunited. Moulin Rouge was a special time for everyone involved. I am never going to be able to hit these notes. No, and I that's was sort of true. being great. get in the room, practice yeah. Nicole, come on, and you would sort of come in and No, that's yes, not true. We it's were, true. No, we were all in the same boat. You were there. so much better no. than me. Spill your guts or fill your guts with James Corden. McGregor the Adventurous Eater. Name one artist you've turned down for carpool karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> Cheers, mate. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Expedia Stuff Commercial. McGregor makes this incredibly smooth. Do you think any of us will look back in our lives and regret the things we didn't buy? Or the places we didn't go? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. His friendship with Hayden Christensen. Red is the coolest color of lightsaber. Three, two, one. Well, there you are. Yeah. In the Star Wars universe, Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader, and Obi-Wan have a complicated relationship. Anakin. Don't do anything without first consulting either myself or the Council. Yes, Master. What starts out as loyalty between a mentor and a mentee devolves into distrust and sadness. But lucky for us, in real life, things couldn't be more different. McGregor and Hayden Christensen only ever have wonderful things to say about each other in interviews and seem to have a really wonderful friendship. They might not get to see each other much, and when they do, it's often for promo stuff like this hilarious Agree to Disagree episode. Obi-Wan's Jedi mullet is the worst hairstyle in cinema history. Three, two, one. Oh, no. Strongly we disagree on that one. Yeah, no, no, no. No, no you rock that mullet no, I very well. But thanks to the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries, the actors got to reconnect. McGregor and Christensen seem to treasure their special bond, and so do we. Anakin, may the force be with you. May the force be with you, Master. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.